Hey everybody, what's up? It's Ben, and I am here with a couple friends today. We're gonna be we're gonna be playing episode one racer, and they're gonna be talking about everything under the sun with me. Uh, I've got Mike with me. Woo! And uh, and uh, what what should I call you? Which which name should I call you? Uh, it don't matter. I'll call Pick you one. I'll call you Angel David. Angel I've David. Da David here. Hi. So. uh... This is an old favorite of mine. This is a Nintendo 64 slash PC game called Star Wars Episode One Racer, and I'm currently playing an emulated Nintendo version because the PC version does not function at all on current PCs. Uh, they have not released a patch for it, and they don't seem to. They don't. It doesn't seem like they're going to ever release one, honestly. So. This one works good enough, and uh, it's got all the features except those awesome cutscenes that would introduce planets and stuff. Oh god, what the what am I doing? Uh, sorry, I'm like just okay. Um, <laughs> so this is one of my old favorites. I don't know. It's something that was easy to pick up. It was arcadey enough, but at the same time, it was challenging enough to where it really did push you to kind of memorize the tracks and the shortcuts and the Um I I had never played Racer Revenge though. Did you guys get the chance to play that? That was one oh, arcade, right? No, Racer Revenge was released right? on PlayStation 2. It was the one where you could actually blow up the other the other racers and you get you no, earn bonus credits for that. Yeah, you had weapons and stuff. I thought you didn't. You didn't have weapons. And stuff. I thought you had like flamethrowers and stuff like Sebulba. Nope, nothing. You just, you just had to ram into the track and ram them. Yep, ram them into obstacles on the track and stuff like that. Huh. No weapons. You're thinking Super Bomb Bad Racing. Yeah. Okay, I am. <laughs> totally different games. I Only really wish that I could play that. Racer huh? was um, the one in the arcade, which you actually control, like the pod racer itself. Oh like, my god. You control like it does in the movie. Yeah, Which and I it felt totally badass. Bad. Like, if, if they came out with a Wii game now that was like a, a Wii Pod Racer sequel, and they had, instead of like a Wii mote, they had those Pod Racer controls, I would buy the shit out of that. I don't care if they're 30 or 40 bucks, but like the feeling of just pressing that uh, throttle forward on, like, you know, the left and right throttles forward and back was so. I just felt like a badass. I don't know. Have you guys played the Kinect one? I was like, oh, now with Kinect. <laughs> yeah. Does it is it like other Kinect racing games where it kind of the pod racer practically drives itself and you're there just to kind of urge it left or right? I don't think I don't remember much. It was like almost ten years ago the last time I played it in the arcade. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I mean the I mean the Kinect one. Oh, I I played the Kinect one the other. Me neither. Oh, all right. Well, like I. I remember playing like the Rycor one, you just wave your arm like an idiot. That's pretty much the only one I played of that game. <laughs> yeah, I, that, I wasn't really sure it was like a full game, it just looked like it was some little miniature add on or something to the rest of. Base, basically, it was. I mean, it was just a compiled mini games into one big mess. Fuck. I don't like, know, all, I don't know like what all that game be. It's better with a bunch of friends and just being drunk and stupid. Yeah. So, who are you playing as right now, Ben? I am my personal favorite, O.D. Mandrell. Do you remember him? Of course. Tall, thin dude. Yeah. He... I remember reading two things. First, I got... I reached, recently purchased the uh, Episode 1 concept art book, and apparently when the movie was being made, they had already developed all of the character models and the names and stuff, and models for the pod racers. But then I picked up, uh, or rather, an ex-girlfriend of mine got me the official Star Wars encyclopedia, the three volume thing, and it has all of the details on each of these pod racers and their lives and stuff, and so I went through there and um, I really remember liking everything I read, and I'm only just like just now starting out, so I've got Odie's basic pod and I'm on the tattooing and training course. Cool. Who, I don't know, yeah, what were you guys' favorites? Huh? Who were your all's favorites, pod racer work? I stuck with Anakin for a long time because I'm not I'm not cool enough to play any of the, of the any of the aliens <laughs> or whatever. I have to stick to the basics. But um, I got Big held hair. up. I got held up on this one track. Um, like halfway through the game, I think Anakin is like the track favorite. And I don't know if you're not allowed to win a race as the track <laughs> favorite or what. But I could not win on this one track. 
so I ended up starting to play as Neva Key, who's oh the guy who, like, put his engines on backwards. And ever since then, I've always played as him. Neva took getting used to. I swear his pod handles differently from everybody else. Maybe that's why I liked him. I don't know. <laughs> I, I definitely played Anakin for the longest time, but I just over time got sick of the look of his pod, and so I started trying all the others. I tried Gascano, but his engines were huge. And uh, I tried, uh, okay, I tried uh, Team Topagillies a couple times, and his turning was garbage, no matter how much you, you uh, upgraded. So, And then, you know, there were a couple of others, like, uh, do you remember Bullseye Navoir, or whatever his name is? Yes. He was lightning quick, like he had incredible acceleration, but his pod might have well just been like a, a rose petal or something, like tap something and you're shredded in bits. Wasn't there a racer named like Slide Parmeta? Slide Parameta or something like that, yeah. Yeah, I think I tried him a few times too. He had a real <laughs> slick looking racer. He did. Oh god, I... I've played this game through too many times. It became like a Thanksgiving tradition, so every year for Thanksgiving I would boot this up and I would go from start to finish in like over the three days that I would get for Thanksgiving off of back when I was in high school and then in college. And so all the racer names, I, I know them. Remember, uh, do you know, does Bulls Roar ring a bell? He, yes. He looked uh, like a little hairy. boar dude. Yeah, Harry Boar guy. He essentially had like the Corvette of pod racers. That thing was like a drag racer in a straight line, but the moment you tried to turn it was just like into the wall. Yeah, I think I remember more of those pod racers' names than I should. <laughs> Dud Bolt, Old Arbido, oh, Ben Quadraneros. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a uh, a Lego uh, Old Arbido pod race. Speaking of him, I'm going on his. He's the track favorite on this one. The uh, that third one, the snowy mission or whatever. Yep. Mission. Ando Prime. Ando Prime. Yeah. I had the Lego oh, Anakin, man. Lego Gascano, Lego Sebulba, and Lego in. Uh, uh, yeah, like. It wasn't just the game, it was also the, <laughs> the fucking Legos. Gotta race them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have tried pretty much all of them, except, uh... Oh god, I can get first place on any track in the entire game. Especially, even that, that Ben Quadraneros one at the very end, through the volcano, that's really difficult. Except the second to last level. Uh, I think the favorite's name is Bazi Barantada or something. Um, have you ever gotten to that championship? The... I know I've gotten first place on every course, but this was years ago, and I don't remember the exact one that you're talking about. Okay, do you remember... Oh my god, I just blew Um... What is the name of the gas giant that you can race through? Oh, uh, it's... I don't think I remember the name. I want to say Talaran, but I'm thinking yeah. of uh, Rogue Squadron. Yeah, that's, that's Talaran. This one... I can't remember it either, but the track favorite was Bazi Barantada. It was the second to last on the oh, Invitational dude. Circuit. And Are you like... talking about the one where you go through the little... You go over this bridge, and you have to stay on the top on floor. On the top floor, and it's incredibly easy to fall to the lower one, and yeah. you fall to the lower one, and you're immediately, like, in seventh to last place. Yeah, I know exactly. Oh, what my about. God. I have dude, yeah, never gotten, gotten first. on that. Let oh, me you, tell you. you. I hate you. <laughs> that course gives me nightmares. <laughs> David, do you remember any of what we're talking about, any of the uh, tracks, or has it just been way too long since you played this? A bit of both. I mean, I remember some of like, the fun tracks and like difficult, but like, last time I played it was like, oh, way over 10 years ago, and the red part got the PS2, and so, like, this was the only game I had besides talking at a time. Okay, so, starting with David, I guess, what are your, both of your, uh, I guess, top five retro Star Wars games? And by retro, I mean... Pre Battlefront, pre. What year did Battlefront and Kotor come out in? Both of those. In... 2003. Did they both come yeah. out in 03? Well, I know uh, Old Republic did. I think yeah. Battlefront came the next year. Yeah, was, yeah. Okay, so let's just say pre Battlefront. I guess we can include Kotor in the list. That includes Jedi Academy. That's, that's my favorite. Okay. Yeah. Pre pre all that. So, what are your top fives? The old, old stuff. Um... I would say the Super Star Wars series on Super Nintendo. Yeah. Super Nintendo. I was like 
was a fun and insanely difficult game I saw this game I played. Just all uh, three of those would be three of your top? Well, not the first one, New Hope. It was. Yeah, it wasn't too big on New Hope, but Empire and Jedi were like my. I remember well, writing it all the time. A New Hope, you couldn't even enter a level password in Super A New Hope. You yeah. had to start at the beginning every time you turned that game that's on. Why, that's why I never liked it. Did you get, in, uh, just a quick like tangent, did you get level passwords on uh, Rebel Assault 1 and 2? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's, I remember playing Rebel Assault 2 on the play, original PlayStation. I remember it was just like, oh look, a Star Wars game. Yes, I, I really, I really enjoyed the shit out of that game. Yeah, that's yeah. Still, like the one game that makes you feel like a Jedi because it's, it needs like Jedi reflexes. You can't succeed unless you're able to twitch dodge like branches and metal support beams and stuff left and right. I think those were the first Star Wars real oh. shooters. Yeah. yeah. There was the like the arcade trilogy from Sega. I remember oh, that's, that that's one. true. That one was really fun. You just like the original had a Ar Atari and... was the first real shooter, I guess. Uh. Mike, what about you? What are some of your old school? Dude, series? I don't know. I had to think for a second because you said not counting Jedi Outcast in that series, and I'm like, oh, damn. But then it hit me like, of course, I'd have to say X-wing and Tie Fighter. Yeah. Like those games. Oh my god, I I have them still. Like. But you can't get them to run on anything anymore. I have the original floppies, like X-Wing was like a five or six floppy <laughs> game okay. back then, and I still have that. <laughs> the original box and everything, it's awesome. But, um, Would you include really, X-Wing Alliance in that, uh, in your favorites then? Or? You know, X-Wing Alliance... It, no. I think out of all of them in that series, TIE Fighter is my absolute favorite. Um, for no particular reason, it's just, I don't know, the way the levels were designed, the way, you know, you fly, you flew, starting off, you flew just a regular TIE fighter, and then the interceptor and the bomber, and you could only take like two or three hits before blowing up. Yeah. Like, you really had to fly like a freaking crazy TIE fighter pilot to do anything. Well, right. I'll also say, uh, Rogue Squadron, that, I remember playing that Rinse and Gap, and that was insane. Rogue wish. Squadron 1, Dark Forces 2, um, maybe either Force Command or Galactic Battlegrounds. One of those, but not both. I never played the class the old um, RTS was computer once. Yeah. The Force Commander was just bad. I, mean, I liked it. It was just too hard. Like it got to the point where in the later campaign levels, you're you're as as the rebels or something. When you defect, spoilers, you defect to the rebellion. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're were they. 2-1-B tanks or whatever, the, the your tanks, they would have something, I'm just going to make up numbers here, Let's. I think they had something like 400 health. If you had anything less than 312 or something, you actually would not be able to beat the level because there was no way to repair them. Stormtroopers and, and ATPTs did a certain amount of damage and you could, it was basically a numbers game and if you fell between a certain number on their health, it was actually impossible to beat that level in campaign. And that game, it was riddled with stuff like that, but I still liked how it was one of the first PC games, at least, or strategy games, that it was, was like one of the first Star Wars strategy games, aside from Rebellion. Um, but it allowed you to like explore other planets on foot and actually see things, not just kind of... In Rebellion, you read about planets, and you it was more like Empire at War's Galactic Conquest map, but you couldn't actually go down to the surface and see... Well, Colors the sky on this planet. What are the mountain ranges look like on this planet? Yeah, I'll be honest. The Force Commander is probably one of the very, 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 very few Star Wars games I've ever played and not finished. Really? That's Gun Gun Frontier to me. <laughs> oh, uh, what was the other one for the answer for? Um, they had Battle for Naboo. Shadows which of was, the Empire. Yeah. That's the one. I remember playing that. I was. I can had a hard time playing that. Yeah. Wait, which one? Battle for Naboo or uh, Shadows of the Empire? Oh, uh, Shadows of the Empire. Gotcha. Shadows of the Empire was my first N64 Star Wars game. I was. But actually, Ben, thanks for bringing up Battle for Naboo. I think I might have liked that better than Rogue Squadron. There was more to it, but I... And so it's like, technically, it's the bigger and the better game, but... 
And I, I loved it, oh my god, but I am so much of like a, an original trilogy purist that I just... The fact that I can fly X-Wings over Kessel and Chandrilla in Rogue Squadron versus flying like an N1 Starfighter over Naboo in the other one just makes Rogue Squadron so much more appealing to me personally. Yeah, I, mean, I love them both, I don't know. The last level was really hard though, I remember that on Battle for Boom. The, the space battle for the droid control station. Yeah, that was just epic. Oh. Yeah, I remember you play that level with the developer commentary on it. There's this one dude who every time they ask him a question, his, his immediate response is just, it, it's big. <laughs> yeah. It was a huge open level and it was so difficult at times to see the droid starfighters that you would just see red lasers flying out of nowhere and they would hit you and you just wonder where the hell everything is coming from. I died so many times. Oh, okay. Did either of you... Okay, two games that I want to ask about. Did either of you ever play Star Wars Obi-Wan on the original Xbox? Yep. My, I always wanted to play that one. Oh like, my god. I remember seeing it when... Uh, before I got the, you know, the PS2 or Xbox, I'm like, I want to play that game. And when I got the Xbox, you know, uh, Old Republic came out and I was like, you know, fuck everything else. I want to play that. I've got to say, like, that game was one of the first games, instead of hitting A-A-B-A-Y or something to put together a melee combo, you would use the right thumbstick on the controller as your attack button. And so you would spin it around, and depending on the, the direction you spin it, and or you spun it, rather, um, it would chain together different lightsaber twirls. So you really did actually feel like you were swinging or spinning a lightsaber. And it was also like one of the first games that allowed you to explore. Well, it was the first game that really allowed you to explore Coruscant and Theed and a couple of other major locales. And it just felt Aside so. From the episode one game. And that was the other one I was going to ask about. Did either of you play Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace? Mike, I know you have. Yeah. Um, I never played that. I played Jedi Power Battles. That was the one I picked. Gotcha. No. That was a good one too. <laughs> Oh, like, that, that one had the, the co-op. That was fun. I know, and then you had to you had to share lives and continue. Then when you get near Dark Maul, that game became, became bullshit hard. <laughs> Mike, do you remember the Moss Espa level? How you had to finish it with a certain amount of health, or else you actually couldn't beat Darth Maul. The um the episode one game. Episode one game, yeah. Problem? Because like there's a there are a finite number of health packs, obviously, in Moss Espa and in the pod racing prep area. And if you're a cheater, like I was as a kid, uh, you can only use the refill health cheat uh, a finite number of times before it just calls you a cheater and doesn't give you any more health. So you can actually uh, finish the pod racing scene with so such low health that defeating Darth Maul is virtually impossible. It's really crazy. Dude, I don't know. I played these games on the original PlayStation. I know they made them for PC, is that what you played them on? That's what I played them on, yeah. Yeah, so I didn't even have refill health oh. cheats on the, the cheats were great. Like, there were some really weird cheats. One allowed you to uh, freely, in any level, switch between playing as Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, or Captain Panaka. And what? another one allowed you to... Um, you could actually go third person very, very close behind. So you could actually kind of play it with a similar camera angle to Battlefront or something like that. That's pretty cool. Hey, I never... But we kind of wish you somehow release all the old PC Star Wars games or like GOG so I can get them and play them. Yeah, my problem is that so many of them are... There's so little support from them because LucasArts doesn't do anything about it, and then Steam or, or whoever ports it over doesn't seem to do much either. So, for example, um, Dark Forces 2, I have had to go onto the Steam forums numerous times and post and fix guides just kind of how to run this game without it black screening or crashing to desktop. And I never had issues with actually running on Steam, luckily for me. Well, with some of them they've actually patched with... I think it was with Dark Forces 2 they patched it. With Mysteries of the Sith, you have to uh, toy around with the graphics settings. Um, Rogue Squadron and all those games, because they use 16-bit installers, they'll work on a 32-bit computer, but not on a 64. And so you actually have to go online and download guides. With some of those games, you can 
simply drag and drop files off of the CDs for the games and onto your computer and it'll emulate an installation. Others you have to use, I found this German guy, so it's all in German, but if you can kind of blunt force your way through it, you can actually use a an EXE that will draw the files off of the CD and onto your computer itself and kind of override the normal installation files. But there is so little support for those games now. So KOTOR, for example, is very difficult to get running, um, at least have it run stable on your computer. Steam has done a good bit to cool. fix the Steam copies, and I don't know if those crash or not, but as somebody who owns a CD copy, and I know a lot of other people who try to install and play the CD copies, if you try to look on LucasArts forums and stuff, it's basically a, a bunch record. of cheeky forum moderators saying, um, uh, have you upgraded your computer recently? And and like, can you post your DirectX Diag uh, script or whatever, like the the log files from your analysis? And it's like, okay, there are fixes that are provided on the internet. If you look hard enough, you can at least share those. So there are a lot of older games that people can't find out how to run. Uh, Mike, there are actually ways. I don't know about the floppy version, but if you uh, download X Wing Alliance, you can install it and play it still. It's difficult to uh, to get working, but you can actually still play most of it. Well, I've actually gotten um, like the original TIE Fighter to run through DOSBox and stuff like that, but once you get up to a certain level in the game where there's so much stuff going on like in-game, DOSBox starts to lag. Hmm. Um, I'm not I'm not that familiar with the way DOSBox interacts with the with your system's hardware to know why it lags, but I can only imagine that it's just it's since it's record. emulated, it's not using your PC's full potential. I don't know, but it doesn't it doesn't run anywhere the way I remembered it running on my really old DOS PC. Well, yeah, I mean it's not optimized. I'm playing Episode One Racer right now, and it's very the sound is glitchy, the visuals are pretty glitchy. It's freezing and lagging at times. It's definitely the emulator. Um, I, I think that it would be pretty cool if somebody like Steam uh, would do a Star Wars nostalgia pack and they would work with a company, LucasArts or the remnants of whatever company developed certain games and kind of put together a pack that they fix up because there are fixes for pretty much any of them. I can't think of a single Star Wars game that is completely... Aside from Battle for Naboo and... Uh, well, there are some actually that I can think of. Battle for Naboo, Shadows of the Empire, and Podracer, uh, the PC version of Podracer. None of those run on modern computers. It's not possible from everything I've read on So, I don't know. But you can play Super Star Wars if you get the uh, SNES emulator. Ooh. And it's also on the uh, Wii Virtual Console. Is it? You actually want to purchase it? Yeah. Okay, is Rogue Squadron 1 on Wii? Because the Wii I know has Rogue Squadrons 2 and 3, which are both great, but. Only for the. Um... Yeah, for the Rogue Squadron 2 and 3, all you can see is by the GameCube game and you just pop it in. Right. Place. But I'm wondering oh. if they've got Rogue Squadron 1, Rogue Squadron 64. What do you guys think they're going to be doing with... Do you think any of these franchises are coming back? I mean, we've got 1313 coming, and we've got this Obsidian... possible Obsidian Star Wars RPG set between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Set in, like, I, I guess using KOTOR's, KOTOR style mechanics. Do you guys think we're ever going to see another... Another racing game, maybe not a pod racing game, but if there are sports if, of any kind, racing or anything in the new trilogy, do you think we'll get sports games of those, like the racing one, or do you think we're going to get movie? We'll probably get movie games for those. I mean, what do you two think we're going to have? I want hot ball. A dedicated <laughs> hot ball game. Hot ball game. <laughs> I know they're going to do the movie games, that's for sure. I mean, yeah. that's simple cash in. Yeah. Um, Anything like adventurous and do something different. I mean, I guess that really depends on Lucas Arts because Disney doesn't really give a shit. As long as you make, you know, make money for them, they you do whatever you want. Yeah. Who do you think would? I make would love to see games? the Jedi Knight series come back. 
How would we do that? Like, the Jedi Knight series up till this point has had Kyle as a pretty much a main character, aside from when you play as Jason, but even then, Kyle's still a major player. I, mean, I didn't really I didn't really care for the turn that they took with Academy, but I still want to see the series come back. Do you think it would be Kyle as a Jedi Master and maybe Jason farther along in his his training? It's a new lap record. Or guitar hunting down. It depends on which. It depends really on what direction they take the new movies. Like if they're gonna make some sort of uh, mention of the the Jedi Academy on Yavin, or I, I really haven't even done a lot of reading to see what time period they're they're gonna take place. And I know that they said they're planning on doing a lot of like spin-off movies or what those could be it could be possibly anything so yeah so who knows i mean you know it really depends if they're going to adopt the extending universe novels because i like why are they not considered a canon to the series to movies or their own separates yeah because i remember reading that last year when they was a big buyout that it was not really considered canon all at least not all the novels I hope that if they do any movie novels, they're good, because what we've had so far, we got a really good, there was a great omnibus of comics, it was uh, episodes one through six, and it was, all the art was great, and it's what, you know, dialogue and all the, the writing is what you'd expect from a comic book, but if they do a seven, eight, and nine, I hope that they don't go Tor's route, because all of the comics revolving around Tor have been awful. I know people, you know, I'm, I'm sort of being ridiculous criticizing art style, but honestly, of all the Star Wars comics I've ever seen, aside from, you know, the ones from, like, the 70s and stuff, I have never seen a lazier and it's more visually repulsing art style as I've seen with KOTOR's com or not, not KOTOR, uh, the Old Republic, the MMO's comics. Those were just awful, in my opinion. Yeah. I hope that they really put someone high profile on the movie comics if they're going to release it, which I'm sure they will. Yeah, they should. I mean, like, so when it comes to 2015, they're really going to push Star Wars like it was 1999. Or it's basically relaunch for a new generation. Yeah. Oh god, I hope they stray away from Lens Flares. Did you guys see that Mark Hamill basically said, I'll do Star Wars episodes 7 through 9? If we go back to props, costumes, and sets instead of CGI everything, Ooh. <laughs> if, if, I did not see that. But I did man, see Harrison but... Ford say that we'll come back as Han Solo. Yeah, Harrison Ford's back. John Williams. I th I'm pretty sure the last piece of news I saw is that John Williams has been confirmed to. Uh, he's taking a part in the composition of the soundtracks. He's not going to be leading it, but he's definitely playing a major role. Um, he's like, yeah, and then. Mark Hamill, I think he was also speaking on behalf of Carrie Fisher and maybe one or two others, but at least for himself and Carrie Fisher, I think, uh, he basically said, we need to go back to what Star Wars was, we need to go back to what that feel was, we need props, we need CGI, we need masks, we need set, actual set locations, because, I mean, first off, he has a pretty big stake in what Star Wars is, and he realizes that he's played a major role in it, so he sees the he prequel does. trilogy, yeah, he still does, and he sees the prequel trilogy, and to him, I mean, what he sees is just really poor CGI, better than B-movies, but honestly, like, it was really obvious that the clone troopers, most of them weren't people in costumes, even, not, not even in the big battle scenes, like in that, uh, in the invasion of Utapau, it was like seven or eight clones on the screen at once, and even Commander Cody, his face and his body, everything just looked really, really out of place. So Hamill was saying, you know, I don't want this to be CGI. And I also understand that because if you're shooting a movie, especially something as incredible as Star Wars, you don't want to just put on a green jumpsuit and stand in a green room and just kind of pretend to be doing things. It's not as, it's not going to be as convincing as if you're actually touching and breathing the air in this room and, and feeling the weight of whatever you're wearing and all that stuff, so I hope that comes true. Yeah, just ask Anthony Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> he might have been one of the other people that, that they were talking about. Oh, well, of course, he'll sign up to anything, so I would get any sense. 
dude, I had I had the pleasure to meet him. He's just the coolest, most down to earth dude, Anthony Daniels. I've heard I he's one of like the, one of the only guys who is. There's there's no security for getting autographs from him. There's no real big fee. No, you just not. go up to him and he's like. He's just a dude. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's fucking he's awesome. I remember when I first heard the droid that he one of the droids he voiced in Tor. I was like, that's Anthony Daniels. Oh my god. I forget if he does any others, but there was just the one, and I was like, oh my god, this is perfect. I like his attitude, though. He loves it, he eats it up, and he doesn't he doesn't disdain the fans, but he also doesn't suck up to them too much. I remember, you know, Alec Guinness, wonderful actor, incredible movies, and just a great guy, but I remember thinking that he was just a whiny little... I don't know. I don't know, I was going to say child, but... He's not a child. He just seemed to be a whiner whenever he was talking about Star Wars. I read some article that what... said uh, uh, that he hated Star Wars. He hated the Star Wars fans. He, you know, would uh, he he said something like Star Wars fans were the most dreadful of fans out there. I, I don't know if that's what he said, but kind of annoying. I mean, yeah, they can be pretty bad. But he was basically complaining about the character Obi Wan. He said that it was. All of Obi-Wan's lines were awful. There was an actual quote that I got, and I'm really wishing I could remember it, but I'm racing right now. And it was, uh, I forget who had the quote, what website it was, but it was pretty much like a great summary of how he feels about Star Wars. And apparently Luke was, uh, Mark Hamill was asking him questions about his acting career, and he paid Hamill, uh, like paid him off just to make him shut up and leave him alone as long as they were on the set of New Hope. From where, where, uh, where I read some of it, like I guess he's in like the high past, is it? Like, yeah, he's been a year career of you know theater acting in England, and he's like, oh, I did it Obi One, and that's what my life work is. Yeah. Compared to Mark Campbell, you know, he kind of just accepted it. Like, you know what? That's well, that wasn't really his life work though, because he was a major character with a bunch of awards from Lawrence and Arabia, uh, Alec Guinness. I mean, he was he was yeah, knighted. He did a lot of great stuff. But... Someone brings just him. Everybody thinks of Obi Wan. Yeah. Afterward, like how Mark Campbell, everybody thinks of Luke Skywalker. Yeah, nobody thinks of the Joker or any of his other roles. I, I also really, um, Ewan McGregor has been someone who kind of has bothered me because he, when he did the prequel trilogy, he openly complained about Star Wars. He said that the fans were extremely bothersome. He said he didn't like working with Lucas or with any of the other people on the set. Um, he went on a bunch of talk shows, including even Top Gear, um, and, and Jeremy Clarkson was interviewing him on Top Gear, and he basically complained about Star Wars, and he said it was not one of the best moments, and he was kind of making fun of all the science fiction stuff, making fun of not only the fans, but all like the, the science fiction stuff, and he's kind of just complaining. And then the moment that episodes 7, 8, and 9 are mentioned, and the moment that uh, some of those... Uh, standalone films are mentioned, Ewan McGregor comes out in an interview with, I forget who, like NPR or something, and says, well, I think Obi-Wan's a very complex character, and he could use some serious backstory and serious development, you know, I think we could make an entire movie about him, and it's like, oh my god, McGregor, like, you're really catching in on this after just complaining for the longest time about hating having done Obi-Wan in the first place because of all the attention you're getting from little girls and boys and stuff. It's a new lap record! I never actually read that, though. I should look into that sometime. It was on. It was posted on uh, the Star Wars subreddit, and then uh, I think it popped up on the Star Wars Gal or the Galaxy's Emu forums and a couple of other places. People were rolling their eyes at him. Um, I just hope that they get a lot of people like Mark Hamill. I, from the sound of it, the original cast, the original trio, uh, Hamill and Fisher and Ford, all three of them, the way they've been talking in interviews. It sounds like they have a really healthy vision for what they want the movie to be. They want it just to be the classic feel of everything. Oh my god, how did I just do that? What did I just... How am I... Sorry, I just drove through... Use the boost to get through. I just drove through a giant... Clearly this is not pod racing. Yeah. Um, the three of them just seem to have a great idea of what the trilogy should be. And they really want to go back to how things were. And I like the sound of that, because I'm an original trilogy fan. And I'm sure that they can make it appeal to younger people, too, and not lose some of the epic moments that people loved in the prequels. 
I don't think apparently that's an issue. I mean, I mean, most likely they're gonna draw inspiration from the old, the original trilogy, and then I guess try to get the big. I guess the modern technology of that was easy. Do you think just keep it away from Big George? Yeah. I think he said he's keeping a stake in it, a small stake, and he might be working, like, literally a stake. He's got, like, a stake in the studio, just kind of sitting there. Nobody's allowed to eat Did it. Did someone say stake? <laughs> <laughs> um. Best thing. I, you guys an idea? <laughs> I. Do you guys think that uh, Abrams and the, the writers are going to adhere to the novels about Jaina Jason and Anakin Solo? Uh, and kind of use those as source books, or do you think they're going to create their own lore and create their own stories, and just use what what's been written in the books as kind of backstory? Do you think it's going to be about Jason Solo's fault to the dark side? Or... No, uh, I think kind of awesome, but yeah. I think they're going to do their own thing and, and try to do their best to respect what's been written. Yeah. Just so that they don't like wildly retcon or something. Yeah. Which I'm okay with. Yeah. I mean, I think most of the people that have signed on, I mean, like writing, producing, or you know, they know what about Star Wars. It's not just like, oh, okay, you know what, we'll do it. Like, like Disney paid us to do this. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, like, like he like said, like he probably will respect the lore. I mean, they might do their own thing, but you know, I mean, I I would love them to do post, you know, the ones that have been written, but you know, it's not the last time. Still gonna watch the movie. So I'm pretty much done with the first uh, championship, so I want to have one more quick talking point before I close this up for today. Um, pod racing was obviously very popular. That was consistently rated to be one of the like one of the biggest things about the new trilogy that people really liked, and it's like one of the only scenes people said was redeemable in Phantom Menace. And obviously, with the Kotor series, swoop racing was hugely popular. And so when it, the, the new trilogy comes out, do you think we're going to see racing in there? And if so, what do you want to see? Do you want to see pod racing make a return? Because I think technically it was still going on at that point. Or do you want to see uh, swoop bike racing? Because swoop bike racing, not the uh, the KOTOR style ones, but the actual kind of speeder bike looking swoop bikes. No, nope, those... not even. I, got, I can one up both of your choices. What? Starfighter asteroid belt racing. That would be pretty cool too, but how would you get a, a set track in an XYZ plane like that? <laughs> Who knows? They did it in episode two, didn't they? When Django Fett was chasing yeah, Obi Wan. That was just so ridiculous. I guess I don't know. I'm just I'm just joking. Yeah. I, I I would play that game though. We could do like Dubak racing or G Gizka <laughs> races or something. I mean, in, um, in, they had the equivalent of cockfights in, in Jedi Outcast. They had those little chompy things. The pit, the pit fighting yeah. things, yeah. Because if Disney's going to make Star Wars, there's going to be a pit fighting ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Perfect timing. All right. Um, so that's all for this one. I just finished one of the first big uh, race campaigns. And you probably fail. Got first place, totally. And apparently a bunch of my parts have decayed quite viciously. So I need to buy some pit droids. I have uh, I just spent all my money on that too. Wonderful. Maybe I can uh, sell something and make some of that money back. Okay, now I've got enough for one pit droid. Two pit droids. Get to work. All right, so next time I will begin the second part of this championship.